This is Blackstone Porter from Driftwood Brewery in this is Victoria, B.C., a London-style porter, chocolate character, a select blend of caramel, black, and chocolate malts. Very nice. Mailbag, mailbag, mailbag. USB voice control light is the first thing. It's surprising a little bit. I don't think I ordered anything voice controlled, but... Oh, hello. It is an LED light. It's a USB LED light. It's well and truly ensconced. Does this say anything? No, it doesn't. Well, we have a USB plug on that side. Is that, in fact, a microphone? And then one, two, three, four, five transistors. Some sort of an IC, little six pin diode uh, and a 50-50 LED and of course that chip is completely anonymous which means it's probably a microcontroller what are you what are you JL223B hmm shall we just plug it in and see what it does Okay, there's a light, changes colors, changes colors when I talk. Okay, so it's not really voice activated, it's just sound activated, which is kind of cool in a sort of a disco kind of a way too, if there was music going on. Okay. I'm assuming that I didn't pay that much for it, but it's a cool little toy nonetheless. Mini USB colorful LED car interior light voice control atmosphere ambient BIUS. Ah, from brilliantly illuminated. That's the BI, I guess, there. Um, currently selling for $1.90 Canadian, buck forty-three American, plus 12 cents shipping, which is within a couple of pennies of what I paid for it. Um, this just seemed like an interesting thing, and I wanted to see how the voice control thing worked mostly for you know, under two bucks why not right blah 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 touch one mode at a time seven colors plus voice control in a total of eight modes touch oh long press dimming long press and okay i missed some uh tricks that this thing has we'll have to uh go back and play with it for a second i suppose so what's this about touch controls um Okay, that's the sound activated mode. Blue, just blue. Nope, it's still sound activated. <laughs> Is that just blue now? Okay, so that's just blue. That's just red. Just green. Uh... Is that sound activated again? No, it's not. So that's got uh, two of the LED chips. Oh, it's just slowly chasing away. There's all three. Okay. There's just ramping up and down. And if I let go, it's back to sound activated mode, I think. Hmm, that's kind of a neat little toy. I'll add it to my collection of USB LEDs that go blink in the night. Next in, we have Module. Yay, Module. Uh-oh. Oh, oh no, that was just that was just thick plastic. No worries, I didn't actually cut anything important. It is, in fact, some sort of a module. It has an inductor and a potentiometer, a little 8-pin chip and a diode, and, ah, there we go. V in, ground, and V out. Sounds like some sort of a power converter module, but I haven't seen one in this form factor before. Hmm. Do we just play with it and try and figure it out first? 
yeah, that's probably best. Then we'll look at the listing later. All right. Uh, test setup. Multimeter power supply with about six volts. I have power connected to V in and ground. Meter connected to the ground. And to the V out. So six volts in gives me minus 3.4 out. Oh! Is this one of those inverter inverting kind of power supplies? So what just happens if I adjust that? Moves very slowly because it's in turn pot. So you know, let's turn it up and see how far it'll go. I'm assuming it won't go above the input voltage. Which would make it just buck. I don't know. Never played with one of these before. Oh no. It's boosting too. See, I'm giving it 6 volts. I'm getting minus 14 volts out of it. Okay. How far can this thing go? It's like 33 volts. Okay. That's surprising. Comes down fairly quickly. So how low can we go? Change ranges again. Ah, that's not the right screwdriver for this job. This one is a better screwdriver just because it's got the swivelly thing on it. I like those, they're nice and rigid, but for 10 turn pot, this works better. Two, two and a half. Two and a quarter. Okay, so that looks like about. So it can go from minus two point something up to minus 33 or down to minus 33 below ground. So I now all of a sudden have a not bipolar, uh, bi directional, uh, dual polarity power supply capability. Well, this is fun. Let's check the listing and see what it says about it. MC34063A reverse voltage module, positive to negative voltage converter, DC 3.6 to 36 volts. Cool. Uh, I got it from World Chips. Currently they're selling it for $2.09 plus 86 cents uh, shipping or American money there. I happened to get it for 77 cents at auction, which is uh, why I didn't remember getting it just because it uh, seemed like a fun little thing at the time. And oh uh, well, yeah. As usual, lots of other uh, sellers are selling them for in around the same price, in bulk price, that's not bad. What else does it say about it? For providing reverse with negative voltage modules, plus 5 can be converted to a voltage output of minus 5, or whatever. Voltage can be adjusted. Input voltage 3.6 to 36, output 1.5 to, or negative 1.5 to negative 36. Uh, regulation less than 4. 5% in, yeah, that's not awesome, but whatever. Uh, the internal switch is module 1.5 for safety. Let's, yeah. When the output voltage is minus 5, the load within 100 milliamps and recommend. Okay, so it's very low current, even though the output transistor or the uh, the switch claims to be able to do 1.5 amps. Hmm. So what does the data sheet for that chip say? It says it can switch up to one and a half amps. Hmm. 100 kilohertz switching frequency. I'm not going to look through everything in here, but uh, yeah, it claims the switch current can take up to one and a half amps. And there it is. So it needs an inductor, sense resistor, small capacitor, another resistor. Where's the output here? There's a smoothing capacitor on the output. Line regulation, 30 millivolts, so 0.05%, that's pretty good. Uh, load regulation, 10 millivolts, that's, that's again pretty reasonable. Efficiency, 87%, 87.7%, that's not too bad at all. Cool little device. Okay, let's, let's get this big one out of the way here. It says plastic products. And I'm going to be a little bit careful slicing into this one. Just 
Oh, it's padded and everything. Okay. Just because I'm not quite sure what plastic product is. Oh, <laughs> I remember this now. These are balloon sticks. Um, they're kind of bent balloon sticks. Basically, you just take your uh, standard party balloon, uh, blow it up, wrap it through there, and stick it on there. That's not why I bought them. I bought these for a model railroading project. Don't these look an awful lot like pipes or poles or other cylindrical type objects? I'm going to do a modeling video in uh, sometime in, in December probably um, using these. And let me show you one that I've prepared earlier, like several years earlier. Well, there's one piece of uh, it in the scrap load, but that's not what I'm planning on using it for. I'm planning on making another similar load to that. Does that look fairly legit for a bunch of balloon sticks? 10 pieces white balloon stick holders with cups for wedding party decor from ZJ10198507030. Um, I paid a buck 25 Canadian with free shipping. They don't even list it in American prices. Oh, whatever. I'm sure if you guys go from uh, eBay.com, you'll see it in American prices. Anyway, so 10 of them. And there's how you're supposed to use them, but obviously I'm not going to use them that way. Yeah, you can get them in larger bundles too. Sure, why not? Actually, that's not a bad price either. If I needed lots of them, but... How many loads of pipes do I need on uh, flat cars around here? So, what do we say here? Stick size, 32 centimeters long by 0.4 centimeters across. And the cup size is whatever. Um, boon sticks with separate cups. Yeah. Aluminum alloy tool. Oh yeah, you notice on there I had the marker over top. This is the first time since I've been using the heat gun to... Uh, to obscure my address that it didn't actually work. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but whatever. Hmm. Oh, ha. Okay. What every hobbyist needs, another exacto knife. And actually, it is handy to have multiples of these kicking around. I've got well, the scalpel plus that one, plus that one, plus that one, plus that one, and uh, that's a slightly different one. But each one of them has got a different blade in it, so I don't have to worry about changing blades on the fly when I'm in the middle of a project. Anyway, this one comes with a safety cap. And oh boy, do I feel safe because it won't come off. There we go. Okay. And it is a standard number 11 blade. So it's actually labeled as an exact 11 using the brand name. That's interesting. A number 11 is just that particular shape. You can get blades in all kinds of shapes, including little saws. And oh, I've got a whole assortment of them. I'm not going to bother pulling them out right now. I don't think that's valuable. But it's got an aluminum, kind of a screw quality thing here, which is, which uh, grips on. It's all metal. That's nice. I've got some cheaper ones um, in my pile here, which have a, a bit of a plastic collet to them. Like this one, for instance, that has a saw blade in it. That piece is just plastic and it's kind of horrible actually which is why I've got the saw blade on it because I don't use that very often and in the little box there is a bunch more blades what is that five more blades never have too many of those never 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 a sharp blade is just worth the effort seven pieces precision hobby knife set exacto blades spelled differently fits for or fits knife for model making crafts yeah, okay. Uh, from Hot Cell 7, I didn't pay two fifty one. I paid a dollar forty two for these. Durable steel material. No, it's not. It's aluminum with five extra blades. Sure, can be used for circuit boards, mobile phone. Can be used for anything you need cutting for. 
Non-slip handle design. Yeah, it's kind of knurled, sharp, yeah, um, etc., etc. Okay. And the fifth and last thing for today, modules. It says plural. Bubble envelope with bubble pack in it. Nicely done, people. Oh, that's interesting looking. I can see a USB port on it and the screw terminals. What does it say? So we have USB, we have what looks like an SD card slot, a mini USB, or is it a micro? A couple of screw terminals marked SP plus and SP minus. We have a 3.5 millimeter jack. Any guesses yet? We have buttons marked previous slash V minus, P slash P slash mode, repeat, and next V plus plus. This looks an awful lot like an MP3 player. TF card U-Disc MP3 format decoder board audio decoding module amplifier. I got this from DIY Electronic. Currently they're selling it for $1.71 Canadian. I got it for $1.38. It must have been on sale at the time. Superior sound quality on board 2 watt mono amplifier. Hmm. Or even 5 volts. If it's on 5 volt power, it can go up to 3 watts. Micro USB, phone data, charging the battery. Yes, it does. Supports TF card and U disk. Got to be USB. No soldering or speaker terminals. Yeah. Supports USB disk up to 32 gig or TF card up to 16 gig, which is what I got in it right now. So I got my cheesy little speakers here. Let's get some power from USB. Plug it in off stage here a little bit. Plug in the speakers into there. And an SD card, a micro SD card with some music on it. Power. Okay, there's a little blinky light. Okay, and there is my copyright free music. So, what do you got here? Holding the volume minus, minus is it. Holding the volume plus, plus is it. Tapping that gives me a next. Okay, it's pretty much what you'd expect. Always handy to have a little source of noise around. It doesn't get crazy loud on the headphone jack. I wonder what I'll do on the speaker plug. This one's a up to 30 amp or 30 watt speaker, so it probably ought to be okay. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Why doesn't that speaker output work? disappointing it sound only comes out of there with a little speaker connected or even this big speaker connected I tried uh, to the speaker terminals that doesn't work maybe it'll only work when it's on the battery hmm let's try that I'm going to assume the battery is going to be a lithium battery so here's one here No, that seems to be playing. Yeah. On the upside, it runs off a lithium battery. And, oh, will that charge the lithium battery? 4.24 there. 4.3, yeah. So it will charge the battery, too. Wow, okay, so I can make myself a battery-powered uh, MP3 player if I want to. Or use it for some sort of portable application. It's disappointing, though, that it won't work with that speaker. Or with any speaker, really. It only works with stuff plugged into the headphone jack, and that doesn't get very loud. Hmm. And here is today's Mailbag Monday haul in all its glory. 
some handy stuff some interesting stuff still not quite sure about this guy uh anyway let's go through the travel times this reverse voltage converter took two months to get here the mp3 player took seven and a half weeks the exacto knife and its blades handy little guy took a one month this little usb light here fun little guy took four weeks and the winner is the balloon sticks they took 23 days to get here and yeah so um now that it's december i'm going to try and do something that i've done previous years in december i'm going to try and do a mailbag monday every week in december tis the season of giving and package opening um so yeah um hope you guys enjoy that and then i'll be back to my regular uh twice a month schedule in in january but if you have any questions or comments about any of this stuff, um, let's, let's chat about it down in the description. I'm still going to experiment with this in the future and see if I'm just using it wrong or if it's actually buggered. Um, yeah, and I will be using these for my modeling project sometime, hopefully in December. I've got some time off from work. The main reason that I don't do a lot of modeling projects anymore on here is they just take a long time to do, waiting for glue to dry and stuff like that. Um, I, I do little bits and pieces off to the side, but it's not really video worthy. But I think I can bang this one off in a single video, even though there's going to be paint drying and glue drying and stuff. We'll see. So, uh, oh yeah, thanks as always. Why do I always... i, I got to write a script one of these days. Thanks as always to my Patreon supporters for helping uh, keep my mailbag full of interesting and amusing things. I do appreciate it, guys. And... Yeah, I will talk to you later.